Welcome to California, where we're live from the breathtaking cliffs of Big Sur for round seven of the ISRA IC Championship at the iconic Grand Valley Speedway. A fan favorite of the Gran Turismo series, Grand Valley is known for its thrilling layout, stunning scenery, and relentless challenges. And tonight is the setting for one of the closest battles in championship history. With only four rounds remaining, the pressure is mounting and the points are closer than ever. Just seven points separate the top three drivers, Carrera, Anderson, and Townend after his win last time out and each one are determined to see the championship lead tonight. Now, Craig, welcome along for the first time since Tochigi. Carrera comes into this round holding that championship lead, but for how much longer? Hi Toby, hello everybody at home, thanks for having us again, really looking forward to, to this one. Grand Valley being an absolute staple for any Gran Turismo fans out there. And Jonathan Carrero as well, this is a place he loves to, to drive and he's six points over Anderson and uh, seven over Townend in the championship. There is a lot still to play for and there's plenty of others with an outside chance of this if uh, any fortune favours them. Yeah, both drivers behind him have striking distance and obviously Townend will come into this with momentum on his side. Let's see what happens today. Now, Colin McAllister picked up a qualifying ban last time out. He will start P22 and Kevin Jacobs alongside him. Danny Diaz was a championship contender at one point but he only qualifies P20 today. He's a long time McDonald. Then Chris Pettersson will line up against Van Bagnari for an all nemesis row. Marcus Townend, we were just talking about in bad qualifying, only lines up P16 alongside Callum Spencer. Then it's an all sim staff row of Josh Martin and Christian Brazilov line take P14 30, followed by a Northern Lights row. They came two by two. Evans and Underhill starting 12 and 11, respectively. Gareth Lennon qualifies P10. He's alongside season three champion Toby Byrne. Then it's championship leader Jonathan Guerrero lining up in P8. He's alongside Olaf Odvin in that title fight as well. Andrew Bavia, P6. Ed Cantwell, P5. And then Craig McDonald, another good result for him, P4. Philip Blum's best qualifying of the season in P3. Douglas Anderson, championship contender, P2. And for the first time, Joshua Wood takes pole position in his home race. One of two home races for Josh today. This will be the first chance he gets to convert to the less he can do it. But crucially, Douglas Anderson is lining up in P2. That's a fantastic position to be considering where his championship rivals are. So we're going to get straight into it, ladies and gentlemen. Then five red lights are out now. Now let's see who gets the better start of the two. Anderson could really do with getting ahead of Josh Wood earlier on here. So here we go side by side coming up the climb into turn one and it's actually Ed Cantwell looking like he's making a move around the outside of Philip Blum immediately on the medium combat tyres. Great start for the Brit. Can he maintain that? Everyone getting through turn one nice and clean as we begin the descent up the hill and Anderson is all over the back of Wood but no impressions made so far Craig. No not yet. It's uh, exactly the start that Anderson dreamed off last night. Uh, while he was getting prepared for this race and that's just what he needs, he needs to keep his nose clean today no issues at all, his rivals are far enough back that they're not a threat at the moment and uh, yeah, it is, it's all about keeping your nose clean, this is a, a fast circuit with some tricky corners, we're in we're a little tight section now at the moment as you can see them coming into the first of two tunnels here um, but you've just got to try and keep your nose clean as best you can and defend as best you can through the fast section, then we've got several cars off here, Danny Diaz, Tom McDonald and one of the, the team disconnect cars is uh, perched up on the barrier so it'll be interesting to see what's happened here Toby that's but that's three drivers right already and um yeah we were just talking about a nice easy start not 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 for them three no definitely not and we've, we've come accustomed to first lap pilots as we're in the second half of the series now uh, everyone's getting a little bit calmer on these lap ones to so finally learn the lessons but not for those three so Philip Blum obviously lost that third place off the start to Ed Cantwell. He'll be looking to do something about it as he comes onto the start finish straight on them super soft compound of tyres. Looks to the right hand side. It's closed off by Cantwell. So he says fine, I'll do it the easy way. And he goes all the way around the outside with some DRS assistance obviously enabled after lap one and he takes P3 back from Ed Cantwell proving the optimum grip is on them super softs. We can see a little bit of battling going on in the background. Plenty of opportunities. You see Andrew Bavia is battling with championship leader Jonathan Guerrero and Jonathan Guerrero Guerrero is another one who we will be talking about. We said Douglas will be wanting to have a nice and keep your nose clean today, but Carrera in a bit of a position where, yes, he needs to do that, Craig, but he also needs to make up some ground. Oh, yeah, he definitely does, but at the same time, he's kind of balanced this out as best he can. He wants to try and keep it clean. As we can see, Craig Evans coming up the inside there of one of the, the sim staff cars. This is the, the slower section that I said, but it can easily go side by side here. 
nice move up the inside. The, the corner finally favoured him and he's come through uh, and to, to place into 11th. But yeah, for, for Carino, he's said in 7th at the moment. He's obviously losing points to, to Anderson. This will be a, a loss in the championship when you when you do all the, the calculations. But as we've seen in previous races, as Peterson now comes up the inside of one of the Sim stuff cars, that's Razzlov going slow in the exit there, completely out of sync for that set of corners. Um, but as I was saying, the pit stops have proven very, very key um, all all this season, every single race. Um, so there's still a lot to play for with Carrero. If he gets his strategy right, he could easily jump from 7th to 1st in no time at all. We've, we've seen it before, and, and last week was a prime example. Uh, the last round, the pit stops are absolutely key. And as you can see, you've got your starting tyres for the, for the top five there. Yeah, so the top three opting for them super soft compound of tyres proving very fast off this start but yes it very much makes sure as we can see Craig Evans has actually succumbed that position to his teammate of Underhill and Martin getting very close to the track limits trying to follow him through nothing doing and now we'll go side by side under pressure from last week's winner Marcus Townend looking to go up the inside up the s -Men section into the hill and now we'll have the inside crucially for the hairpin down the inside can he make the move stick on the season two champion I think he can but Martin gets a bit of a better run and we'll see some side by side action I'm sure Sure, Townend looks like he's succumbed the place, but he's going to throw it down the inside. No contact. Fantastic racing from these two. Can he go all the way around the outside? No, Martin Cullers is the door. Townend is there on the outside, but he just doesn't have the traction, which is ironic considering he's on them super soft compound of tyres. But great racing between those two as we get some replays of the start, Greg. Yeah, it's a really place of the start. That was good defending by Josh Martin, but we're on board with this team now, now Razalov. He's got a um, couple of cars looking at this. Oh, hang on. He's kind of clipped the curb there and that's oh that set off a chain reaction behind him i couldn't quite tell what car it was for a second there but he just lost over the curbs and that everybody else checked up i just i feel that was a very unlucky for a, a lot of the cars behind us we're riding on board here with, with danny diaz who's an outside chance of the championship so this has not been a good one for him as you can see Razov there just hitting the curb on the inside danny diaz slows up as the cars ahead of him and uh, the ones behind did not see what was happening and were just uh well, that was going to say they're a passenger, but he's definitely a passenger in that. And uh, I think it's Campagnario here that we can see. Yeah, he's just going to the back of him. He wasn't expecting that. He's been re ended himself. He seems to have got away with it, though. That was looks like Colin McAllister that was behind him there. So that's... Um, they both just seem to have uh, snuck away unscathed to an extent. We've got Kevin Jacobs now. And, uh, yeah, he looks like he's going to get caught up in this. Yeah, did the same thing as Campagnario did. Got, got absolutely collected. He's facing the wrong way. I don't know, did he manage to survive? Nope, he's the one that's ended up stuck the barrier. That's very unfortunate for poor Kevin Jacobs. Definitely an interesting way of parking your car up, but yeah, yeah. Just, just a very interesting accident. Like you say, everyone just checked up, and I think that might come down to just one of those first lap incidents. It will be investigated by the stewards nonetheless. Uh, we'll see what those guys come up with. So, here we are then. Lap three, Josh Wood has broken, crucially, DRS from Douglas Anderson, and that leaves Douglas Anderson under a little bit of pressure in DRS range of Philip Blum behind him. Philip Blum is the man in last place in this championship, so if there's one man you want behind him, it's probably not the guy with not much to lose, but he'll look to the inside nothing doing, and everyone's been very cautious because whilst this is a good overtaking opportunities we see Carrera getting into it with Odford and again we're talking about Carrera needs to be careful he's showing no signs of that he's actually lost another position to Odford there um, and that is very interesting I think that's a no further action on that incident like we predicted Craig but Carrera under huge pressure he is running the hard compound attire so he is on an alternate strategy so that explains why these cars are all over him but there's a championship at play here he's got to be careful because he made severe contact there with Olav and he's lucky he didn't go off as I was just going to mention with that and we can see there's confirmation Gareth Lennon being informed that Carrera is seeming to struggle on these hard compound attires which I think is the truth but that turn one whilst it's a good overtaking opportunity it's quite tight isn't it and there's no runoff like in modern circuits Craig it's all gravel out there yeah it's it's a, it's a very strange corner because you're you're flat out turning left and you're you're still turning left as you're hitting the brakes to get the car to turn, want to turn right so it, it's just you've just got the momentum's the complete opposite way that you want it uh, and it, it's going to take a brave soul to, to put a move in there and it's going to take an even braver soul than Jonathan Carreiro to try and hold on to position three especially with the hard tyres which just don't seem to be enjoying this this uh, circuit configuration at the moment so yeah we'll, we'll, we'll see how that pans out over the next couple of laps it, it, it might come back to him as the, the track rubbers in and as the tyres ahead go off a little bit but as things stand um, doesn't seem to be the, the tire of choice as we can see Philip Blum here trying to make another move on Anderson. They're getting very close here. I don't know if Anderson's now holding folk up a little bit. He's starting to have a bit of a train behind him. 
because I was just thinking a lap ago, it's, it's, this is the most spread we've seen in the field, and then a lap later, we've got uh, a Tony train behind Anderson. The Anderson Express for P2. Yeah, he does look under pressure. We saw in question in his team, what position is John? So he's obviously driving and thinking about the championship, but like his engineer reinforced him, just, just get on with your own race, keep your head down, we'll watch out for Carrera, because obviously it is potentially affecting his pace at the moment as he creates that train behind him, a DRS train as well. So that will be very interesting to see, because the longer he creates this DRS train, the more pressure he's going to face coming down the start finish straight. Speaking of DRS zones, we'll pop out of this tunnel into the second of the two. As we see, Campbell ahead pops his DRS, his blood will on Anderson as well. So these guys are all just pulling each other along at the moment. This is a perfect race for Joshua Wood so far, isn't it? Just broke that DRS and he's going about his business. And like we see many a time, if you're not battling, you can preserve those tyres just that bit better. And those alternate strategies might not be as effective, but in terms of alternate strategies, Ed Cantwell is the highest on the medium compound tyre. And then I think Pavia is as well, as is McDonald. So there's a few alternate strategies in the mix here and it'll be interesting to see how those go as we see Philip Blum is getting very close to Anderson there but still opting not to follow him through so a lot of drivers are a bit nervous about this and that's why because as you can see Anderson goes a little bit wide even in out so I think the reason oh, hey, uh, sorry the reason Blum didn't make a move there is because Dougie Hell braked himself and he almost didn't make the corner so very tricky turn one and I think that's going to be the subject of this Grand Prix but this train Craig is absolutely massive and this contact this contact Ed Canwell has turned over Philip Blum and that's why we said the margins are so fine and that wasn't even the corner we was expecting an accident today Blum is furious and most importantly Craig he is out well that's going to be a relief in the mirrors with Douglas Anderson but what an absolute shame there for Blum that was just unfortunate I, I, I don't really know how well I know how we can see what's happened but it's, uh, it's a strange it's a strange incident there from, from Cantwell he's just got a he wasn't even going for a manoeuvre, he just has to sit sit behind him and, and, and see what happens. As he, he's been watching Blum put the pressure on Anderson for the last couple of laps, and all he had to do was just sit and wait for his moment to pounce. So obviously Blum's had a little lock up there, but it's, it's not enough. I think that's just a, a little bit silly from Campbell personally, but um, Anderson's not going to care. He's he's managed to, to break away now, and he has to make the most of this to go and catch wood and put the distance back to uh, the, the chasing pack behind him as we're um, on board with Blum here. Yeah, just a little lock up there, and then yeah. Over she goes. And that is a big one. It's a crying shame for Blum. We talk about drivers who haven't had a lot this a lot of luck this series, and uh, Philip Blum is definitely up there. So condolences to him. He will retire from his home Grand Prix after looking certain for a challenge to the podium. But that incident again will be investigated as the others. Gareth Lennon has just made a move on James Underhill through the tunnel. That's a great move from the Northern Irishman, and it looks like if you get unsettled in that tunnel, then you are going to be under pressure, and the move will be compounded to your misery as you come onto that bridge with the DRS. So Lennon, great move, moves his iron brood racing machine up into P9. Of course, Lennon and McAllister earlier this evening were um, confirmed as Iron Brew's lineup for next season, so showing that the pen is mighty there. And here we can see Craig Evans going side by side with his teammate. It's a Northern Lights battle for the final point coming down the start. Finish straight. It's a pure drag race because Underhill has DRS as well, but Josh Martin just behind this scrap as well in case anything goes wrong. Can Evans do anything up the inside of his teammate? He'll go and he'll get on the curve with a little bit of contact and it almost invites the door for Josh Martin to have a go. And we've got to spin happening in front of us. I think there's a lot of smoke. I think a car off in the background as well. Absolute chaos. And this is what happens, Craig, when the field is so compact and you can just see by attempting a move into turn one, the pack slows down so much and opens that potential for incident. Uh, it really does. I, I couldn't even tell you what car that was that spun around or that was off in the back. I'm sure we'll get a replay shortly. It's just you came out of turn one and all of a sudden there's a car spread eagle across the circuit and you just panic him. But Underhill's one out of that. He's actually managed to keep the position ahead of Evans and uh, he's ahead of Cantwell now. So I'm guessing it's Cantwell. He's done a 10th place. He must have been the car that, that spun. He has really been in the wars today. So we've got Colin McAllister here chasing Razalov and at town end trying to make a, a move on Razalov there. Uh, Collins on the, the medium set of tyres, Razlov on the hards, and we're just checking, it's box box for Woods, so the race leader is getting called into the pits, seven laps in on the soft, super soft tyres, doesn't seem too bad considering what we've seen at the last couple of races, um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens to the rest of the field, I'll be surprised if Cantwell doesn't pit as well considering he's had a spin and he is also on those super soft tyres, but it's, oh, it's getting tasty here, even even for the, the scrap side of the points, and there's another car right that's... Well, you said someone that's had bad luck. This is another one that's had not much luck this season. Poor Cam Spencer facing the wrong way into the wall. He's not done <laughs> quite done a lance throw like uh, Jacobs did earlier, but I think he's uh, I think he's stuck. I'm afraid. 
Yeah, we'll have to see what happens to Spencer as here we can see more battling and more cars going off into Whoa. turn one. Two cars making contact there. It is Vrazilov and Townend. And we saw these guys going wheel to wheel just earlier on in the lap, Craig, through the tunnel section. And unfortunately for these two, it has severely ended in tears. As we see, the race leader will be coming out thinking, what on earth is going on? The first penalty of the race is issued and it is a five-place grid penalty to Cantwell. And like you say, it was wasn't really much of an excuse for Cantwell on that one, and the stewards clearly agree, handing him a penalty for the next race in Wisconsin Road America. And here we go, Craig. We'll get some replays and see what happened to Chris Pettersson. He's got a nice bit of DRS here in the car in front. Just a little bit late in pulling out, but he's still been able to do this. And we've seen so far the outside is not the place you want to be in this corner. And, yep, yeah, that's that's why. You're just going to get nerfed right wide. He's uh, stuck in the gravel here. And that just up the road, a couple more cars spinning around with Razalov, which is who we're on board with now. He's got the DRS, as does um, the car in front. And, oh, yeah, just nowhere to go there. He's sitting back and watching, see what happens. Oh, that was a shame. Was that, uh, was that Burn getting the inside curb there, or, or town in? I'm not too sure which one, but um, Razalov's managed to get away there. And Cantwell was just ahead, I think. That was the, the, the spin. It was Marcus town in that we went on board with here. So he didn't really have much he was doing. He was just defending the inside. I think he got a little bit too much curb. As you can see here, yeah, so it's a little bit unlucky. Oh, yes, you, you, you can put it into a little bit of a bad driving. You put the curb yourself, but um, I think Tennant was a bit unlucky there. And this is us on board with Spencer now. Oh, he's been tagged from behind. That's a oh, shame for Callum. He just got he was he was slowing up for an accident ahead, which is um, the right thing to do, but it's a uh, bad outcome for him, I'm afraid. Yep, so running on board with Valeria Campagnari, you would assume this is the man who's made the contact. And yeah, as you, yeah, yeah, as you see, he's just made contact with the back of Spencer. Wasn't really a lot of reaction time in his defence, but here we go. So Christian Vrazilov on the offensive on town end again. I'm assuming this is when these two came to blows. So he's going to go around the outside, similar to what Pettersson did. Looking for around the outside and, oh, I don't know, was the contact there? I didn't really see much movement on the steering wheel to suggest if there was. We'll find out on the view of Marcus Townend. So side by side, coming into that corner, what happens here? Does he hit the curb again? He does, and it is. It's more contact. So Townend has effectively ended his own race and two other drivers races in the same corner corner over the course of two laps and I'm sure the stewards will be keen to take an interest in that so Townend has gone from here to that and Craig Evans is off as well in P13 this is turning into a race of attrition isn't it we're down and almost everyone will be guaranteed a point at this point so it'll be very interesting to see what happens Townend takes out a couple cars be interested to see what's happened to Evans the incidents will be investigated Craig but wow what has just happened over the last three laps well what has happened is Marcus Townend has just uh, dis dis dissipated his own championship uh, fight. Steve is only, only seven points off Carrero and he's, he's, he's now getting nothing today as we can see uh, Anderson, the other championship protagonist, coming into the pits and uh, Lightning Craig McDonald and Olaf Odvin take the, the top two spots there. But yeah, the, the field has just been halved in <laughs> two, three laps like you say. I think there's a couple more instances we still need to have a look at if, we're, if we can get some replays of that. But um, yeah, at this rate, everyone that finishes is going to get a point for just being here by the looks of it. So it's a shame, but we're still going to need to watch uh, Josh Wood and see how this strategy pans out for him. He's coming to pits early, come back out, and then everyone's just kind of uh, <laughs> part of like, the Red Sea in front of him. So um, he's up to 12th at the moment. Anderson's coming out behind him. And it uh, looks like he's got a three and a half second gap. So that's uh, early pit stop seems to have gone in his favour. And he's on the medium tyre, so we imagine that would get him to the end of the race with no issues at all as uh, Anderson puts on the super soft. So we'll see if he has to make a, another stop or if they fall off the, the cliff towards the end. But um, it's all got a bit calm now, Toby. I'm a bit unnerved by this. So here we go. Let's find out what happened with Craig Evans coming through the middle sector. This is Ed Cantwell ahead. Ed Cantwell locks up. And oh, oh dear. Has he just... I feel like Evans... Yeah. I feel like Evans has just misjudged that. He's yeah. just took himself out, Craig. Yeah, just misjudged that. That was it. I don't really think the car in front did too much wrong there. You just have to have a bit more awareness, but... Uh, yeah, just a lucky kind of end of his own race, so shame. But uh, everyone else is, is, is carrying on now. We've got 30 cars left in this, and um, still a championship to fight for here because we're on board with uh, the man himself, Jonathan Carrero. He's the one leading the way. Anderson's already pitted, so it's all down to how long Carrero can last on these tyres. 
and um, actually even better still how, how long uh, or how fast Anderson's uh, super softs and how far towards the end of the race they'll get him so I think these two might be might be quite close at the end we'll just have to wait and see as there's that Odvin coming in the pits now yep so that's released Carreno up in the second place place and uh, we've got a five place grip penalty for uh, for coming now for, for causing a, a, a collision so I think that's fair enough there's not too many arguments uh, to be had with that one as there's a fair few other cars in the pits if you look at the, the timing tower on the left Ooh, absolutely, Ooh, what a close. cheeky move from Gareth Lennon. Just catches Josh Martin napping as he goes wide into that corner, goes a bit too deep. So forcing the error and then taking advantage of it, that's one of the best moves we've seen, at least in this Grand Prix. Great move. And this is the Gareth Lennon that's been missing from this championship, hasn't it? Lenny is known for his dive bombs throughout the ISR ranks. And it's been a while since we've seen one, but he pulls one off successfully, a trademark on the Simstaff car, the Season 2 champion of Josh Martin, and he certainly wasn't expecting that. So let's take a stock a little bit here. So McDonnell yet to pit, Carrera yet to pit, Vern yet to pit. Quite a few people on the long stints as they opted for the hard compound of tyres. I think the only runners left potentially. We've got any mediums left. I think McDonald might be our last medium runner. The rest are on hards and it's quite evident that that tyre's fallen off now because Carrera is making gains on McDonald. It'll be interesting for you to see how far this hard compound of tyre goes because there's only five laps left and it comes to a point where you need to analyse this and you need to say, right, maybe there is a bit of life left in this tyre, but if I need to get all of these positions back that I'm forfeiting by going this long and having that tyre offset, I need to have enough laps left to actually do it. So they continue for another lap, but they're running out of time if they want to make, I'm assuming, what is going to be a super soft run to the end work, because they're not going to have time to catch anyone. But Burn and Jonathan Carrera following each other through. And this is probably good for Carrera. He's in clean air, but he needed to do something different, didn't he? Clearly getting involved with the pack today was not working for him. He was just losing positions, risking his race when he's in the championship lead. So the team have allowed him to go long. Burns following suit in that as well. But it'll be interesting to see where Woods. So Woods come out about 16 and a half seconds behind these after everything's said and done. So Wood will comfortably retain the lead. Anderson hasn't really made much of an impression yet, has he on Wood? He's still holding at about 3.5 seconds despite being on newer super soft tyres. So very good pace from Josh Wood and he's obviously been able to bring those tyres in at quite a comfortable pace so it'll be interesting to see for the championship where Carrera comes out after he makes his pit stop Greg. Yeah it'll be interesting to see I think the, the, the two at the front are losing a little bit of time now um, judging by what we've seen in the last lap so I think Byrne has a little bit more pace on Carrera um, he's had to do a little bit less fighting by the, the looks of things but the, the gap is coming down Wood is slowly catching and Anderson yeah he was he was about three and a half seconds when he came out that went up to about four it's coming down a, a bit again now three three and a half seconds again so yeah the, the tires aren't making as much of a difference for Anderson as you thought they might Wood's coming out of the mediums Anderson on the softs so it's looks like Wood's got the the, the the strategy here but like you say it is Carreo that we're, we're looking at that's the main battle where, where is she going to come out what tires is she going to put on where is she going to be in the field and will he have a chance to make uh, make an impression as you say as Toby Byrne tries to make an impression coming out of uh, turn one for Carreo there and that is not helping the tires of either of them or <laughs> the gap back to Wood who has dropped a couple of tenths there so unless he's made a little mistake himself but um, yeah these two are still fighting and if you're Carrera, what do you do? Do you let him pass and follow him, or do you just try and pit and, and see where you end up? We, we don't know if he's going to try and go to the end. It's not mandatory to change the tyres if you can get all the way, so... Yeah, it's, uh, it'll be interesting. If they can make them hold on, they're, they've, they've, both of these guys have had a masterclass, but if not, um, they could be looking like they're going to have some egg on their face. Absolutely. Wood, so far, holds the fastest lap of the Grand Prix, is in the net race lead. If these guys do pay, it's a great position for the American Anson's making a little bit of progress if you watch the timing board there, but nothing enough to make a presence at the moment. As you can see, Gareth Lennon has clearly pitted quite late because he's come out in last and 13th place, battling with Ed Cantwell ahead. As you can see, Martin is following the um, other I am Roman McAllister. So shout out to Colin McAllister, by the way. Kept his nose clean. He started P22 following his qualifying ban last time out in Magello. He's climbed up into P8. So fantastic drivers. Both of the hard compound tyre runners then. Championship leader Carrera and Burn following him come into the pit lane. They had a lot of free air. So depending how much fighting was going on behind them, they might not come out too bad. But it's quite clear that Joshua Wood will resume the race lead here in Big Sur, California in his one of two home Grand Prix for this American. He will come out in P1. There goes Anderson up into P2, so that'll be good news for him in the championship. Olaf Odfen looks like he'll claim re-free, and those are the guys coming out now, so where are they going to come out? About P5? P6? 
Carrera comes out P5 and P6. So here we go then. Coming into turn. Whoa! And there's a Northern Lights racing car of James Underhill slotting himself into the show. Hello, gentlemen. You can take my seat for me. What an interesting situation that was. That was very close, and Byrne clearly caught out by that as he's dropped a couple tenths. But Underhill all over the back of Jonathan Carrera Craig with warmer tyres. Yeah, definitely. Clearly, just got to, got to watch his back now. Uh, it's been a pretty, just like McAllister, it's been a pretty quiet race for Underhill. He's, he was uh, he's in the top 10 before all the carnage and pit stops kicked off, and he's now up to sixth place. Um, I'm surprised that Carrero hasn't lost as much time or as many positions as I thought he might with that longer strategy. So. Hey, uh, not done too badly. I think there's been a little bit of fighting in this midfield, which has maybe helped them out keep the keep the gap. But uh, yeah, he's just got to keep it steady for these this lap, these couple of corners. Underhill doesn't seem to have the, the fight in this section here, but the DRS that'll catch him up for the the last section through the the, the chicane at the end around the last corner before the DRS again for the start finish straight. So this is this is a key set of corners here. You've got DRS to help catch up, and then you've got uh, you've got to stay close and uh, do what you can. For the, the DRS to start finish the race, Underhill actually does the opposite. He seems to go a bit deep there, and uh, if he's not careful, despite having DRS, burns a little bit closer than um, and he'd probably like him to be. So we'll see how this goes uh, towards turn one. And you, you don't want to be, be sitting out either because behind Burn you've got McAllister Martin and um, on Premier's a little bit further back again. But yeah, you don't want to be um, getting caught out through here as we can see them all nicely clean round. No issues yet. Everyone's on fresh tyres. You should be expecting too much drama. And um, you have jinxed it. Campagnari is the one. Campagnari, the Italian, is off. What a disastrous season he is having. Off into turn number one. Don't know what really happened there. Hopefully we will get a replay. But he made it so close, Craig. He was in the points. He had two laps to go. Heartbreaking stuff for the team. That's a really struggle in the team that won the championship, of course, in season number three. Have had a torrid time this time out. But we are on the final two laps of the California Grand Prix and we have a mighty battle forming for sixth place. As you can see everyone separated less than a second and DRS will play a part in that. As we see Craig McDonald is making quite serious gains on Olaf Odvin. We'll see if he's able to do anything as we come onto the final sector. And he is in DRS range. We've seen DRS be quite powerful. It'll all be about how well he can stick to the back of that renowned NAR as we come out of the final corner. Then DRS will open for Craig McDonald chasing his first podium, I think, since potentially since Yonging in round number three. So we'll see what he can do. He looks to the inside. It's closed off. He's going to look to the outside. It's a danger zone. He's quite a long way back. He's not significantly ahead. And he's broke. And he's gone wide. I don't even think there was contact there. McDonald's off in the gravel. I don't think there was contact. Did he just get over ambitious and lock up on the gravel? He's furious. I think the marbles have played a huge effect there. We can see another car coming straight for us. It's Ed Canwell. Another car goes deep into turn number one. And another two cars. Cars, Craig, are out, and I think everyone who finishes now will be guaranteed a point. That is just mental, isn't it? McDonald is fifth in the championship, on for a good haul of points there, and I, I, I don't know what, what has happened. He's just in the same as Valerio on it. They just, they've just got deep, like you say. Oh, I'm Toby Bursley at the inside of James Underhill. That's the first time we didn't see the move in there, but yeah, like you say, I think it's just the dirty part of the track now. You've you should, you should know by this point in the race not to not to be sticking sticking your car out there, especially with one lap to go in the championship fight. But Carrero will be laughing there. That is damage limitation for him. And uh, yeah, sitting in fourth place, he's uh, gained a couple more points, but he's not losing as many points in Anderson as he as he as he first thought. And uh, here we go, Toby Josh Wood winning for a perfect race, pretty much. Josh Wood exits the final corner and it's breaking news. Florida man wins in California. Josh Wood wins the California Grand Prix and becomes our first driver to win their home Grand Prix. It's a drag race to the end. Is Byrne able to catch him before the end of the run? No, just as it's a drag race to the end. Josh Wood takes a dominant victory, fantastically fought out really well a really mature drive from Josh there will be very happy with that one he's not at the best season but this is a great way to turn it around so Josh Wood does take first place and a full 25 points Douglas Anderson finishes P2 that's big for the championship great day in the office for Anderson but fantastic limitation Jonathan Carrero comes from P8 to P4 to minimize that damage Earl of Odfin gets himself back in the conversation a little bit in a P3 as well James Underhill scoring first points for NLR in quite some time same for Byrne Colin McAllister believe 
believe it or not, Craig, has not scored a point since round number one where he won. He'll be very happy to have broken that curse today. Josh Martin, P8, Andrew Pavia, P9. And the curse is broken for Ryan Brew because for the first time this season, they've got both cars in the points as well. And then Craig McDonald heartbreak right at the end of that Grand Prix sacrifices a potential podium just by I don't know but like you say you should have known by that point but Craig McDonald will not be happy with that result but wow what a race this has been Craig and what a race this could turn out to be for the championship yeah what a race indeed you're saying curses have been broken but I think we've set a few curses here today I'm I recall you said earlier in the races this uh, they've been quite calm in recent in recent times. Yet this is the the least finishers we've had in the season, and it I think it was just down to a, a lot more human error there than it was or AI error there as opposed to um, fighting too hard with your with your uh, compatriots. So yeah, championship is um, well and truly on now. We've got Ed Campbell, Camp McNary, Evans, the 12th and 14th, Razalov, Town and Spencer all involved in accidents. Um, Patterson, Bloom, McDonald, Diaz and uh, Kevin Jacobs to, to round it all out. So it is a shame and as you can see standings now tied on points. Would you believe it? Jonathan Carrero, Douglas Anderson, 78 points. Can't count out Ola Vonden like you said back uh, with 63 points. Just 15 back. Um, and then uh, Marcus Townsend didn't score today 59 points but he's still in it. So there's, uh, there's still a, a, a lot to play for. And then um, like you say Craig McDonald with 47 points. He's uh, missed a big opportunity there to, to stay in the hunt, as has Danny Diaz. Andrew Bevere had a good result today. He's, he's uh, had a little jump in the points up to with 41, and then he's followed closely by Cantwell. Today's race were now Josh Wood and uh, Joshua Martin as well. Very close. Jonathan Guerrero and Douglas Anderson. Would you believe it? Like you say, after seven long rounds, go into the final three rounds of the championship level headed and like you say yeah 15 points is nothing in this championship we've seen how easily stuff can swing well of Odkvan could be the championship leader next time out we have no idea Marks Town and despite a disastrous Grand Prix today has put himself in a position where he's still in the conversation Colin McAllister is the next man on the sheet 31 points tied on points with James Underhill Christian Vrazlov then on 27 it's a single point separating him and Toby Byrne Tom McDonald will then follow with 23 points and it's Kevin Jacobs on 17 again a single point ahead of Chris Pettit Peterson. Then it's Callum Spencer, Valeria Campagnari and Gareth Lennon as we get to the very unlucky part of the grid. And, and Craig, like we said, this, this battle is close, not just from the top, but through the entire field. It is so close together. As we take a look at the team standings, ART Panasonic Toyota quite looking like they could claim the Constructors' Championship this season. They are well ahead, but the battle for second is also very close. And fourth and fifth aren't too far away either, Craig. Yeah, it's uh, battles, battles all the way through the field, and I, do you know what, it's funny you, you, you said that, but then it, it can swing any which way, the, the best man to ask for that is Colin McAllister, like you said, he won the first race and hasn't scored since then until now, that could easily happen to any other driver here, so there is a lot to play for, a lot of risk and reward still to be had, and the team's championship, the RT Panasonic are running away with it at the moment, they've, they've increased their lead from last week, but again, anything can happen in the championship, and uh, we've seen before that that has done as well. Exactly, so that is it for your first North American round. Next time is part number two. We travel to Wisconsin for Road America for the second North American split. And then we will finish the season off in South America at Ibarra Circuit in Ecuador. And of course, the beautiful Sao Paulo Interlagos Circuit. Thank you so much for Craig Evans for joining me once again. Thank you to all for watching. We've got three rounds and a very close grid. Do not miss it. Until then, see you then and goodbye.